we saw some very interesting things. Now, some of these details have already leaked out in the public, and I'm sure some of them will also be quite evident to you by the time this video is published, right. because I think we're going to be after embargo. But we have a series of new announcements here today. Um, the first of those announcements being DLSS 4.5 and it's dynamic frame generation solution as well. Yeah. So I think this is really important, right? Because last year we had the very first NVIDIA uh, transformer-based DLSS model, DLSS 4.0. We were extremely impressed by that last year when we saw it at right. SCS 2025, which was of course a year ago, alongside of course AMD's innovations in the uh, imagery construction space with their FSR4 upscaler, very impressive as well. So DLSS 4.5 basically aims to iterate on that original uh, transformer-based model from NVIDIA, and I believe it was trained with five times as much compute. Uh, Brian Catanzaro talked about this in a promotional video, and it's a, it's a very impressive model, and it seeks to shore up, I wouldn't say the weaknesses of DLSS 4, because it didn't really have strong weaknesses, but I think it just aims to improve and iterate on that underlying model yeah. to actually achieve really great image quality in games. Wouldn't you say so, Alex? Yeah, we saw it essentially running uh, in multiple ga games, but the, the most important one that we saw was a Black Myth Wukong. Yeah. Essentially, we had two monitors side by side, and the ability to, with the stroke of a key on the keyboard using the debug version of DLSS, uh, one of the DLLs there, uh, zero and nine key would switch between the uh, old K model and the new, I believe it was M model, as they call this, uh, the 4.5 version. Uh, and there were actually really immediate differences, and there's a number of reasons for that. Um, things that they've already shown in promotional uh, video pieces, like um, if you looked uh, generically at something like, for example, um, plants in the background, you could see that they were more easily stable uh, in the newer version. Uh, very easy to see that difference there. You could also, interestingly, this is the most different thing, if you look at a lot of areas where light interacts with an edge, uh, like a specular highlight shows up, the difference is actually quite large. One, the aliasing is, is a lot less there, but also you're just kind of seeing like a larger specular response. And normally we would imagine that those things, the uh, aspects of those in image quality are based upon like, oh, how is the ray tracing being denoised? Or, oh, is there like a, a brighter light source there, like an analytical light source? And the answer is no here. What they're doing now is that I believe the area in the frame or the the thing that DLS accumulation is occurring at is pre-tone mapping now. Mm -hmm. So they're not get, so the average results you're seeing from accumulation are not going to be compressed and clamped anymore. Rather, that's going to happen after it. And in this case, that allows for it to actually bring out more accurate details that were already in the image before uh, that were always there, uh, but the, the kind of the image was being compressed. And so you can see that um, in aspects like the area behind here, uh, behind the main character uh, on the wall, you can see that there's these like little graded openings uh, leading to the outside. And a lot of them are kind of disappearing due to the tone mapping from before. Mm. Uh, and now you can actually see them. Um, another aspect that they pointed out pretty well that it was is partially relevant to this uh, kind of more accurate to the ground truth of the image is um, the the particles that are flying through the air. Now, particles are actually done pretty well through DLSS in the past, I would say, actually pretty much in all versions of the model. Um, but in a game-to-game -game basis, they could be better or worse. And this new model is much better at bringing it out in games where they were more problematic. Like, for example, the, the fireflies here around the uh, the like little Buddha statue on this uh, table here. But it does look to be resoundingly improving kind of you know, the little gripes you would have with uh, the original Transformer while also adding in new bits. And they showed it here running, I believe it was on an RTX 5090, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And they did emphasize, though, that the new model is slightly more expensive than the previous one. They, I think the quoted figure was like 2 to 3%. We'll mm -hmm. see when we actually test it out ourselves. Um, so... The, they say that, so it's a little bit more expensive, and we saw it on a Blackwell card. And but the fact that it's a transformer model, though, makes me think it could potentially be more expensive on Turing and Ampere than what we saw here. 
Um, but once again, this is something you'll be able to adjust on a per game basis. If you don't want to run the transformer because it's too expensive for you, mm -hmm. you can always turn that off. Um, that was altogether really, really cool. Very easy to see differences just by flipping back and forth. In fact, uh, I, I did recommend to them. I was like, you know, you guys should make that like something users could usually do because it'd be really easy just to see how much better the model runs. But uh, so it is. Yeah, I thought this was really cool because like to me, I never really found that DLSS 4 was like lacking in any particular sense relative to other upscalers. But then you see this next step, this next iteration where they're really getting like a super fine particle resolve or, you know, the shadows look super crisp and super great, like in that Buddha statue, or whether, whether you're looking at like, um, you know, distant foliage and it's resolving much more cleanly, or like, you know, the tone mapping issues that you pointed out earlier that created some problems, but again, were they really problems? I mean, NVIDIA obviously has access to like super high resolution ground yeah. images that they're training on. So they're actually able to get like this uh, much closer approximation of that ground truth result here, which I find very, very impressive. And it certainly is um, looking considerably better in some of those areas that before you might not have said, oh, that's deficient. But actually it turns out you can get this much nicer specular response. You can get this much nicer particle uh, resolve. So that's like really cool. Yeah. Another aspect of NVIDIA's uh, new DLSS announcements today is their DLSS 4.5 dynamic frame generation solution, I believe. Yeah. Um, and by the way, actually that earlier example we saw was running with the 6x frame generation, I should point that out, as opposed to the 4x, which is on the other end. So we're looking at an improvement in frame rate as measured by these uh, on-screen statistics of like from like 190 before it looks like to about, you know, 250, 260 now, which is, <laughs> I mean, that's crazy. And then there's, some increase in latency, but it's so minuscule on this card. It's on the order of like a few milliseconds. I think it's quite minimal relative to obviously that uh, massive increase in generated frames, you know, five generated frames for every one real frame. That's pretty extraordinary there. Yeah, that's that great. brings you up to like some crazy multiply, I imagine. Yeah, I think since it is a new uh, model, it is not so expensive. Yeah. And so they're able to punch in more frames there without increasing latency so greatly, which is great. And the next demo too, we saw this is running in one of Alex's current least favorite PC ports. Yeah. Um, this was the Outer Worlds 2. Uh, one, they also showed the difference off between the old transformer and new transformer model. Like side by side, you can see that the stars become brighter, uh, brighter in the new yeah. one, which is interesting because they're kind of being over averaged in the old model. And that's something you see happening with a lot of TAAs actually that you wouldn't see in a ground truth image. Um, but, uh, then the, the demo, essentially you're going through the, the main ship in the game. Uh, and as you walk through it on, and this was running on an RTX 5060 Ti. Uh, yeah. yeah. 16 gigabyte version, 1440p, if I'm not mistaken in performance mode. And I think they wanted to show basically as you walk through the ship, varying levels of GPU load will change the uh, multiplier. We saw it going from four, five, six times yeah. uh, down to maybe three, I believe, when we looked out a specific window as the, the GPU is not troubled by looking at empty stars. Um, the, you know, we're watching these on, uh, you know, really great G-Sync displays. I didn't notice a difference. <laughs> we'll have to see what it's actually like when we take it under the you know, like the microscope uh -huh. or also just more time with the game. One thing that we were told very specifically is that if you are dropping due to like varying levels of load, like say one area of a game without frame generation runs at like 200 FPS and you go to another area that runs at 50 FPS, right. you're going to immediately feel, even though you may not see a great difference in fluidity of frame rate because generated frames are actually pretty good, uh, you would definitely feel the difference in real input latency because that is a large difference, actually. Um, this was more, this, I wouldn't say this was hands off. We were doing it ourselves, but this was also very cursory. We can't exactly say definitively certain things about it. Um, some other things to say about the demo. It did have, it was using Lumen. And so there was a lot of noise and you could sometimes see that the 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 new model would produce a different noise pattern than the old model essentially yeah but it was like still problematic in both models but that's that's really speaking to the quality of the input and not as much the uh ray reconstruction yeah no it's 1440p dlss performance mode has like a 720p internal resolution lumen and, and yeah. lumen is already very noisy in general yeah so that's kind of what it was yeah, yeah. so that was pretty cool and i think ultimately like this new frame generation technology i don't 
again, I wasn't looking at NVIDIA's old frame generation technology and saying, this is lagging behind competitors. Like it felt like a really high quality frame generation, probably the highest quality frame generation out there. But this just increases the multiple in the frame generation to get you like to, to some truly ridiculous refreshes even in, you know, AAA software. Although I would say Outer Worlds, one key caveat with this is that we were seeing the game just in its introductory area. Mm -hmm. I imagine if we were actually seeing the game out in the open world on one of those planets, that the uh, stuttering, the know, stuttering would show these, through. These behaviors yeah. would probably show through, which is unfortunate. So, Outer Worlds maybe not the best game to show this off, but actually in this limited demo area, it was a very compelling. And I think the, you know, the frame generation differing in the moment, it didn't really seem like you could actually tell that too much. No. In terms of the input response, it felt fairly static. It did feel, feels fairly static, at least in this scene. Another thing to point out is that the, technically the model does have some differences in terms of quality. I think mm -hmm. NVIDIA isn't talking too much about that, but uh, we were specifically told that uh, UI handling will be done differently. So for like semi-transparent elements, um, there may be like a separation now that is uh, made available to DLSS that it can actually respond to better. Mm -hmm. And so areas behind semi-transparent uh, UI elements will reproject better into the current frame, into the future, as you would say. And at that moment, that means technically we'll have to test this out to see if this is true, of course. But uh, since we didn't see a great side-by-side -side of this, uh, that things like uh, cursors or, um, you know, aiming reticles or you know sideways widgets on the screen will not when you uh, spin the camera have potential ghosts in them or as much or the in, the info the info behind them may reproject better so yeah. we'll have to see that that's one thing we'll have to see when we test it out ourselves though. So.